Welcome to our lecture online. When you're dealing with Bayes' theorem, sometimes you'll see something that looks like a, a tree diagram. And yes, we do use those as well, utilizing tree diagrams for the Bayes' theorem. So here we're going to apply again to our example that we've seen before. We had a thousand subjects, some of them had disease, some of them were healthy, and then we're going to run tests on them. The ones that have disease, some of them will test positive, some will test negative. The ones that are healthy, some will test positive, and some will test negative. So what does that tree diagram look like when we start putting numbers in there? Well, first of all, there are a thousand subjects. How many have the disease and how many were healthy? Well, based upon what we were given, out of the thousand subjects, 4% have the disease. That meant 40 have the disease and 960 are healthy. So here we can say, that 4%, which equates to 40 that have the disease, that means 96% are healthy, that equates to 960. Of those, some will test positive and some will test negative, of those that have the disease. So we go here and we look at the sensitivity of the test and it says 98%, which means that of those, the ones that have the disease, 98% will test positive. So that means here we have 98% and we're going to multiply that times 40, which gives us 39.2. Of course, there's no such thing as 39.2 subjects, but that's the number that we got, which equates to 3.92% of all the subjects tested have the disease and test positive. How about here, the ones that test negative? Well, if 98% of the ones that have the disease test negative, because that's the sensitivity, then 2% will be escapes that will test false, false, uh, falsely negative. So those that have the disease, what number, what percent will test negative? Well, here we multiply 2% times the number that have the disease, which is 0 0.8 or 0.08% of the total number tested will test negative if they have the disease. All right, now we go to the ones that are healthy. 906 that are healthy, how many of those will test positive? Well, we see that the specificity is 95%, which means that 5% will test falsely positive and 95% will test correctly negative. So we're looking for the ones that test positive if they're healthy. Therefore, there'll be 5% false positives. So this becomes 5% times the number that are healthy, which is 960. 5% of that, that would be uh, 48. That would be 4.8% of that. So it would be equal to 48, which is 4.8%. And finally, we're looking at all the ones that are healthy and that test negative. So we look at the specificity, 95%. So 95% of the ones that are healthy will test negative. So we multiply this times 95% and uh, uh, the number is 960. So that would be equal to, uh, let's see here, that would be 912, I believe, 55%, 548, 48. Yep, that is correct, 912, and that would become 91.2%. So that's what the tree diagram looks like. It gives you all the numbers associated with the ones that are diseased and ones that are healthy, and percentage of the total, and of course the number that tests positive, the number that's, that tests negative for the ones that are, have the disease, the ones that test positive, the ones that test negative when they are healthy. Now let's add some of these numbers together. So when you add these two together, 39.2 plus, plus 0.8, that gives you 40. And when you add 3.92% plus 0.08%, that gives you 4%. If you add these two numbers together, 48 plus 912 gives you 960, and 4.8% plus 91.2 gives you 96%. And then of course, when you add these two together, Together, that adds up the total number subject of 1,000, and that is 100% of the total. So you can see that this is how we use the tree diagrams to separate all the various combinations of tests and whether or not the people or the subjects have what you're testing for or don't have what you're testing for. And that's how it's done.